Hello, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer Hatzfeld. I'm the director of the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program. And this is the first of a series of online modules that are intended to help you manage your Tri-Service Nursing Research Program award. So these online modules are required a required element of your terms and conditions. So it's important for you to make sure that you're, you're watching these online modules and paying attention and learning as much as you can from them. We've gone through and, and identified what are the most important parts that you as the principal investigator or as a key member of an award um, need to be able to know to be successful. And these are the things that we think will help you most. So we look at these online modules as the foundation of the information that you need. But then there's two other parts that come as well. And one of those is a post-award workshop. And that's where we get in person for about a day. Uh, you'll get to meet with your grants manager. And, um, I'll be there. We'll be able to talk through some more details and answer any questions that you have and maybe things that you've learned um, in the first few months of your award. We normally schedule that for sometime in April, May. It may change each year, but you can look for an invitation sometime within the first few months of your award. We also have created a handbook, and that's intended to be a reference or a resource manual for you. We like to be able to hand that out during the workshop so that we can go through it together and make sure you've got everything um, all at once and in context. If for some reason you can't make that in-person workshop, then we'll mail you the handbook itself. And we think with the handbook and the online modules, that should give you what you need. Um, but we really like the opportunity to interface with you in, in the in-person workshop. So as you can see, the communication from you to the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program goes through a series of steps. And there are a series of expectations and requirements that we receive as the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program from the Department of Defense down to the Uniformed Services University. And it's important for you to know about this because there are some times where we wish we could make a change, but there are requirements that are at either the Uniformed Services University or at the Department of Defense. So those requirements come down to us. It's also important for you to know um, that, that the communication flow to our program comes through the grantee organization. And so there may be a time where you'd like to reach out to us directly. Uh, to ask a question or ask for some guidance, um, and you're welcome to do that. But at some point, we will need to include that grantee organization because those funds have been given directly from the Uniform Services University through our recommendation to the grantee organization. And so that's why we need to make sure that they're included. And it goes from all the way from you all the way up to the top um, in both responsibilities and requirements as well as communication flows that direction. So one important way that we uh, share that information and the guidance is through a document called the Terms and Conditions. So the Uniform Services University has a set of terms and conditions that they've defined and that becomes a, an important attachment to your base award. So when, when the funds are, are um, obligated and executed directly with your grantee organization. As part of those documents, they, they receive the terms and conditions. And so it's important to read through those. So the Uniform Services University has those, and then the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program has a small supplement that goes with those, where we've either um, clarified a few things that make it specific to the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program, or we've um, made things a little bit more narrowly defined just to help you out and help us out and make sure that there's good communication um, between you and the grantee organization and us as the funder. So one important element of the TSNRP terms and conditions is that you can transfer funds between budget categories, but it's limited to 10% of the total amount. And that just helps make sure that we are, you're spending the funds um, closer to what you had said you would, and we're all on the same page with that. We'll talk later about how to um, how you could how you can change budget categories if there's an appropriate way to do that. We also ask that you acknowledge the program, the TSNRP, when you do any publications um, with that. That just helps make sure that people know that we're excited about your work um, and it also tells them a little bit about what we do as well. Um, so it's it's a that goes both ways. 
Also, it's important to know that we have an interim progress report that's due six months after your award. And that usually comes up pretty quick because you've got a lot of things coming up. So just make sure you're aware of that. That lets us know or gets a sense of how you're doing right from the very beginning. And sometimes there are barriers that you might face um, and that, that way we're aware of them. We can either help with them or at least we can track them pretty closely and see if there's other things we can do to help um, with that. So don't forget your six month interim report. And also the other important thing to remember is that your final report is due 90 days after your study closes. Um, so remember to put that on your calendar um, and start keeping your documents ready uh, as you get close to the finish of your award. So make sure that you read the terms and conditions um, of your award. Your grantee organization may not send those to you, but ask for them because um, it's really it's got some important information there um, to be able to to understand what we're expecting from you. The first critical step um, that you need to know about uh, that's going to happen even before your six month progress report is about regulatory review. The Department of Defense regulations require that anything that we fund needs to have a secondary review for regulations, either Institutional Review Board for Human Subjects Research or for Animal Care and Use if it's for animal research. So the way that works is that you'll submit your documents um, to the grantee organization and then they'll submit it to the Tri-Service Nursery Research Program to your grants manager. And they need to submit the approval that you've received from either of those two organizations along with the protocol and the, um, all the appendices. So the informed consent document, all of your, um, maybe you have a, a flyer to announce the study. Uh, maybe you have a set of uh, clinical protocols if you're doing a surgical type study. So all of those appendices need to be submitted together with the protocol. And then also all of the study team members that are on that protocol need to have all of their appropriate training, both their curriculum vitae, so CV or biosketch, together with their training um, to be able to conduct the research. So once we receive those, we submit them to the Uniform Services University, either the Human Research Protections Office or to the Animal Care and Use Committee. They review those documents, make sure that they're um, in order, that it's appropriate to fund with DOD funds and that it makes sure that it meets the DOD requirements. Um, and then once that's been done, we'll send you a start letter. And that's when you know that you are approved to begin to engage in research. So if your project doesn't involve research, if you think it's an evidence-based practice project or it's something that may not require that, what we do require is a letter from your institutional review board saying that they've reviewed it and that it's not research. We would ask that you also submit what you sent to them so you can describe the project, just so we make sure we're all on the same page. So that's the most important thing for you to know right up front, is that once you get institutional review board or IACUC, uh, approval to send it so we can get your start letter to you. The other important thing for you to know and for most uh, new principal investigators to know is what happens if something changes and that can happen for a variety of reasons and it's not a problem um, but you should know what to do about it. So in the terms and conditions it gives you a list of the things that require prior approval. So before you make the change or implement any changes you need to ask for permission and then we approve it. In some cases it may require a modification to your award and that's not a problem. Again you'll just let us know there's a change request form and submit it to us. As I mentioned, the terms and conditions define what changes are required and require prior approval, and those are listed. I do want to point out that equipment purchase, um, what that means, sometimes we use the word equipment differently, but equipment in this case means um, items that cost more than $5,000. So if you're purchasing that amount of, or that type of equipment that's very expensive, and it wasn't part of your initial proposal, then that's something that we would need to, to approve. Similarly with foreign travel, um, if that wasn't part of your initial proposal, we need to review and make sure that that makes sense, um, that our program, which is geared towards military nurses in the United States, that it makes sense for you to share about that information overseas. So those are, those are just a few and they're listed um, on the slide and also in the terms and conditions, so just pay attention to that 
um, and that change request form is what's needed. So what are your next steps? What should you do next other than those first two critical things to know about? Make sure that you're working closely with your grantee organization. Make sure that you keep them updated on your project. Remember that award and those funds were granted directly to them. Um, and so they're responsible to make sure that the funds are spent correctly. So as the principal investigator, make sure that they know what you're doing um, and how, what's happening with the project. Make sure that if they have requests for you to review documents or to provide input, that you're being responsive to that. They usually only ask if those are things that we need, and so we really appreciate you working closely with them. At the same time, um, if there are questions that come up, you are welcome to reach out to the uh, staff at the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program. You're welcome to reach out to me directly if, if you need to. Um, we're happy to have conversations about how to think about a particular challenge you might be having or some potential solutions. Um, so don't be afraid to work um, to reach out to us. We're happy to, to have that conversation. Don't forget your interim report, which comes quickly at six months after the award date and then be looking for the uh, post-award workshop invitation, which should be coming in a few months. So there are a couple of key takeaway points that I think are important for you to know and to remember throughout your, your award period of performance um, and especially at the beginning. So first, make sure that you are working closely with your grantee organization. As I mentioned before, the award itself is made to the grantee organization. So you have a responsibility to them to make sure they're aware of what's happening and also that you're responsive. It's an important part of your responsibility as a, as a principal investigator. We also love to hear about your project. So we have progress reports, both the six month one that's gonna be due pretty soon for you, also every year that on the anniversary of your award and the final final report. But we'd love to hear about it in between times too, especially if you've published something or if you're going to present a part of your project, um, or even if you have any questions or problems that come up. We'd much rather hear about things when they're, when they're small problems instead of big problems to fix. And lastly, remember, we want you to be successful. There's a reason that we selected your project to fund. We think it matters and it's important. So we'd like to set you up for success. So please reach out to us if you need something. Please pay attention to the rest of these online modules. Glean the wisdom that's shared by these faculty members. Um, and please let us know if you need anything more. We look forward to working with you.